Hello everyone, this is Ben over at ERP Connect, and in this video we're going to be reviewing our time clock extension within D365 Business Central. This time clock tool is perfect for anyone who wants to have their employees record their time directly in Business Central, and this can be used to easily track hourly time for employees and also send that data to your payroll system. You also have the ability to track time for some out-of-box features like the service orders, the jobs, and the production orders, as well as plug it into applications that we've created like work orders and project management. Now, before you get started, as with all of our applications, you will need to go ahead and first download it from AppSource, after which you'll want to go right up here to the generate demo key that will give you the full access for 30 days after which you can reach out to our team to purchase your full yearly license and enter the activation key in right here so with that we are already on the time clock setup page and we're going to go ahead and jump right into the various options you have when setting up our time clock extension so let's go ahead and jump right into the setup here so the first thing we're going to look at here is under this general tab and it's this payroll system drop down. Now, right now we just have this option for ADP uh, and it's going to create an Excel export, uh, which you can use to upload to ADP. If you have a different payroll system, just reach out to us, let us know. Usually just takes a couple hours to create that Excel export for you and then you'll be off and running. This next setup here is this clock in and out. So as you can imagine with a time clock, the most important features are going to be clocking in, clocking out, taking breaks, taking lunches, clocking into you know various service orders, work orders, things like that. And at its core, the first thing is going to be your clock in and out, right? So this time snap for clock in out is just going to snap it to the nearest 15 minutes. So if you clock in at 8.03, for example, it's going to round that down to 8 o'clock. Whereas if you log in at 8.09, something like that, it's going to round it to uh, 8 15 so you can either toggle that on or off depending on what you need there and then this retain clock in entry uh, if you have this off what it's going to do is it will not retain the clock in entry so it'll just create one line and on that line it will have your time in and time out if you turn this on it will have two lines in the time sheet administration and it will have an actual clock in entry and then on another line it will have a clock out entry so that's the only two options that you need there this break in break out and lunch in lunch out are going to work very similarly so one you have to decide if you want to enable it or not and uh, two you have to decide if you want to retain the break in and the lunch in or out uh, entry that's going to work the same as we saw up here so if you have that turned on uh, it will create two entries if you have it turned off it'll just create one entry with a time in and time out the default break in the default lunch code um, i'll just put break in lunch there when those transactions or those time entries are created it will just put this as the uh, default code there so you can see whether it was a break or a lunch and then we've got a uh, default break deduction default lunch deduction then a default break over hours and default lunch over hours so the default deduction here 0.25 so it's just going to say by default if they worked over four hours deduct uh, 15 minutes from their time entries so this would be if they're not physically punching in and out for their breaks just assuming that hey they took a break after four hours and clock it against their payroll and then same on the lunch right so if they worked over six hours we're going to assume that they took a half hour lunch again this is just our setup whatever you see there uh, or need for your business you can set up accordingly and then those will automatically be triggered based on how many hours that they've worked these next options are all going to be related to uh, time allocation towards various uh, service orders, projects, work orders, jobs, production orders, things like that. Whereas all the time up here so far that we've looked at has all been specific to payroll hours, right? So they're clocking in and out. This is what they're actually going to get paid. And then down here, this is where all their hours are going to be allocated. So again, all the options will be very similar just enable whether you want these buttons on the actual time clock itself and then define if you want to retain the project in entry or service in entry and out and all that kind of stuff so again if i come down here you're going to see all the options are exactly the same for today's example we're going to hyper focus on our project in and out um, which is part of our project management extension but what i'm going to show today uh, is going to work exactly the same for all of these functions so with that the setup is pretty simple uh, we've kind of run through it all here and the next few things we'll need to jump into are in this process tab up here all right so the first thing we'll look at here in the process tab is our shift setup 
So these are gonna be various shifts that come with it. If you have different shifts that you need, you can add it here. And essentially what this is gonna do, I think I've got everybody set up as nine to five. It's just automatically saying what the start and end time is. And then you would assign a shift to an employee. That way you can automatically track whether they're clocking in early or late or clocking out early or late, things like that. Um, by setting up the shifts here, uh, it allows us to do some analytics there and then also send some reminders for people to clock in, maybe if they're there, uh, but they just forgot to clock in. So everybody's gonna have a shift and these are all the default shifts that we come with. Again, if I come up here to process, under this user setup, this is going to be for uh, administering the time clock. So if you want someone to have the uh, time clock admin page where you can make edits and things like that, uh, you'd add them here and check this checkbox for can admin time clock. So right now I would be the only admin here. I'm going to close out of that and come back here. The last thing we'll need is this employee time clock setup. So this is probably one of the most important things that we look at here. This is getting everybody set up, uh, the employee number, the last name, first name, employee status, uh, the payroll employee number. So here, uh, just linking this to your actual uh, employee in Business Central, this payroll type. So whether they're salary, uh, hourly salary with overtime or contractor, if they are salary or salary with overtime, you would put their default uh, hours here. That way, when you export it to payroll, uh, that's automatically kind of what they're going to be paid. Whereas if they're uh, hourly or contractor, then it's going to go out off of their actuals. And then we talked about that shift code earlier. So nine to five is my example. You'll see everybody here is marked nine to five. And as we go through the actual example here in a second for our demo, we'll be able to tell if people are clocking in early or late and then send some automatic notifications there. So with that, we are gonna go back into the setup here. I believe we have now reviewed everything that is needed. And the next piece will be to jump into our actual demo. So to start our demo off, let's actually jump into our time clock. So let's type in TCK. And up here, you'll see uh, the first glimpse of the live demo. So you'll just put in your employee number. So in this case, our employee numbers are actually our names. So I'm gonna type that in. You'll see I've got a bunch of different um, entries so far in my time journal entries. And I'm just gonna come in here and clock in for the day. You'll notice now it says my day has been started. I can click okay. Uh, I can do this on my phone as well, which I'll overlay a little uh, example from my iPhone here while we go through the demo. Uh, but you can do it from your tablet, your computer, your phone, anything that you can access Business Central on. And again, simply just put your employee number there and then click clock in. Again, if you remember the clock in and out is more so for the actual payroll hours, whereas the project in and out are gonna be for those applied hours, right? So applying out hours to various work orders, projects, jobs, all of that good stuff. So let's say we've clocked in for the day. I've now gone and grabbed my cup of coffee, done what I needed to do, uh, talk to my coworkers, all that fun stuff, and I'm ready to jump into one of my projects, right? So I'm going to say, okay, now we're going to jump into a project in order to start recording some of those applied hours against a project. So I'm going to come in here, project in, grab one of my projects that I'm working on, go to a task, say I'm working on maybe vendor discovery and click OK, right? So now Ben Cole is logged into the project. Great. Click OK. Now we've got our general clock in for the day and we've project in, right? So I'm going to let some time pass, pause the video real quick, and we'll come back here uh, in about 15 minutes. That way we can get an actual time entry and then we will see how that time entry gets applied to that project from our project management tool. All right, now that some time has passed, we're gonna go ahead and clock out of this project. So go ahead and click project out. We finished our task and now we want to record that time. So I'm gonna click project out. It's gonna remember what I did previously and it's gonna ask for a description and whether this was billable or not for the project. So I'm just gonna say worked on vendor discovery with client and I'm gonna mark that as billable. Now just click close and you can see we logged off the project. However, I still am clocked in for today. So that kind of is that uh, key between the two options there, the clocking in, clocking out in generals for payroll and the project in and project out is for the actual uh, allocated time to the project. Um, here, you'll also notice that we only have one line here. That's because we had that selection turned off at the setup. We don't wanna retain the project in, we only want the project out, but it will retain the start time and the end time so that we can get a total time for that entry. So in this case, 0.2 hours. Now, if I go to my project management, we can see under our project here, let's go into that project and 
And if we go up to our time journals, we can see here that we have the time entry. Uh, we have some from a time sheet, which was done from the project. In this case, we have it from the time clock. So you can see the description, you can see it billable. And then if you take a look at our project management video, we'll go in depth over all the rest of these fields, but you can see so far, obviously that it hasn't been billed. It's not an invoice or anything like that yet, but it did make it to our project and we are all good to go there. So if I come back out here, into our time clock that's pretty much it it's that easy for the users to use they can clock in for the day clock out for the day when they're done so let's just say we're done for the day i'm going to clock out my day has now ended and you can see that i've got my project time for 0.2 and my payroll time i'm going to get paid for is 0.24 assuming that i'm hourly again if you were um, salaried that would just go off the 40 hour work week or whatever you have to find there for their salary time so that's it on the actual time clock working on a day-to-day -day basis. And the last piece we'll want to visit today is our uh, time entry administration. So let's jump over there real quick. All right, so under time clock entry administration, there's a lot of good stuff here. This is where your admins that we just set up can come in and edit entries or check on various things that we'll go over here in a second. So we're gonna start with these buttons up top, the first being uh, today's clock in status. Now. What this is going to do is it's going to show everyone who forgot to clock in today or who has clocked in late. So the first thing we'll notice here is that my user Ben here has clocked in late. We can see that the shift start time based on our shift code here, nine to five was 9 a.m. Uh, we started at 9.48. We are obviously late. It's going to automatically mark that tardy flag for us since I came in late. And it's also going to show how many days uh, in the last 30 that they've been tardy. So again, that's going to track it for all of the various users here and I can even go ahead and click on these users and email them a clock in reminder so maybe they are here but they just forgot to clock in or something like that you can enable this email and I'll pull it over on the screen real quick as to what that looks like so that's just going to look something like this and it's just going to say hey peers you didn't clock in for today please make sure you do so and email us the correct clock in time so that's going to come into play when they email us the time how we can edit it from the admin view so in terms of uh, these other buttons you can just simply filter on who has not clocked in who's tardy today all employees and then again you can highlight multiple people and email them their clock in reminders so just a quick grid uh, easy to use in order to kind of check who's here who's not who's late and all that good stuff and then remind folks so the next thing we'll jump into here is our non-clock journals both the individual non-clock so this would be for things like sick time holiday bereavement things like that uh, HR has now the way to uh, book these um, directly in the system. So this would be a single line entry. So just for one employee, uh, the date and the transaction type. So in this case, you could just do sick time potentially. Um, and if you had a holiday coming up, you could come in here to the uh, multi non-clock journal and go ahead and add Christmas day as an example. At holiday time, uh, you can come in here and select everybody and then go ahead and create the entries. And what this is gonna do, as you'll notice here, if I send, uh, do the largest entry number to smallest, you can see now that all of these employees right here, you can see their names, you can see the transaction type is holiday. Uh, they got a full um, eight hours, it looks like here for that holiday and it's been unposted right now and it's on 1225. So again, just an easy way to come in here, um, update everybody at once and make sure that they get paid for that holiday. The next thing I talked about was uh, the ability to actually change entries if you're an admin. So let's say uh, this person, let's look, this person clocked out or clocked in at 916, they clocked out at 945. Maybe they just forgot um, and they did show up at nine. So I have the ability now to come in here as an admin and actually update that time entry, do nine o'clock sharp. And that should now update our entry. We see it working there real quick. And you can see that the total time updated to 0.75. And if I scroll all the way over to the right here, you'll also notice that the modification flag has been checked and it will show who modified it. So now if we come up to our change log entries, we can see that um, what the modifications were. Um, so it looks like I also updated the end time at some point um, from 931 um, to 945 and 916 to nine o'clock sharp. So again, just a way to both 
uh, edit those entries and then also track in the change logs. Only prereq here is that you actually have the change log entries turned on. This is going to be tracking our time entry table. So it's going to be 7127689. Uh, if you're looking for that, that's a custom table as part of time clock. Just go ahead and, and track those modifications and deletions if you would like, and then those will all populate here. So again, just an easy way to track that information. And then the last thing we're going to look at is this pre-payroll report and creation of the payroll file. So if you're all good to go, again, here you have the ability um, to filter by date, employee, things like that. So we'll show that real quick. So I'm just going to do 10 one to today. And again, you could filter by employees. I'm just going to run it for everybody. I'm going to preview this and this is going to show it now by employee day clock in clock out project or job they worked on all their clock ins clocks out things like that and also differentiates between payroll hours and then applied hours so you can again use this in order to kind of run some utilization over those two metrics um, to see kind of how much people are working in general versus how much uh, time they're clocking to projects work orders all of that good stuff so that's it on this report. And then if you're good to go there, you can go ahead and create the payroll file, which will export that Excel based file that we looked at earlier. So a lot of good things here to look at again, uh, look at that today's clock in status in order to see who's in, who's out, uh, who's late and whatnot. Um, the non-clock journals, both regular and multi are just going to be for the holiday bereavement, all that kind of stuff. You can change the entries and also track the change logs and then finally run that pre-payroll report um, and the final payroll export in order to send that to your payroll provider. So that just about wraps everything up here on our end. We hope that you enjoyed this video. And just to do a quick recap of today, uh, hopefully you can now see that time clock is a great tool for anyone looking to record their time directly in Business Central. This can be used simply to track hourly time for employees and send that data to your payroll system. Or you can utilize it to book time against out-of-box features like service orders, jobs, and production orders or plug it into one of our popular BC Toolbox applications like work orders or project management. You now saw a full end-to-end -end demo of how this can work with your project management tool as we saw today and hope that you saw some value in these additional functions and are gonna go ahead and download our demo here shortly so that you can access it for free for the next 30 days. Thank you as always for checking out another one of our Business Central Toolbox videos focused on productivity and automation. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop us a comment below. And if you liked what you saw today, I would highly encourage you to give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to our channel for future updates. Thanks again for tuning in and we will talk to everybody again soon.